Okay, welcome to our first TMJ intraoral massage class. Um, the first thing we're going to talk about is the facial structure. If you, both of you want to come in and stand behind me so that you can see some of what's going on. With Esperanza, or would you rather me use an alias? You want a, you want a porn name or something like that? All right, so what you want to do <coughs> is... <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. But I, I've got her in a craniosacral traction hold right now because it's a very neutral position. Her chin is slightly elevated, her forehead is back. So if you look down the midline, straight down the midline, which is going to be right down the nose, do you see a deviation of her chin to the right? Yes. Okay, you see that. All right, now the next thing we want to do is, Esperanza, will you slowly open your mouth? Watch how the, the, the jaw functions. You see that it still draws to the right just slightly. Mm -hmm. All right, so that means that because there is a, a pulling to that side, that means that the muscles on this side are, are a little tighter, uh -huh. and the dysfunction is probably a little greater on the side that it's pulling to. You can close your mouth now. Another thing you want to look for in a classic TMJ, and Esperanza doesn't particularly have this symptom, but she has all, all of the others, is that when they open the jaw, you will see a deviation of a C, or an S pattern. And that's because the jaw is grinding inappropriately. There's been some deterioration, some cartilage in the TMJ or the temporomandibular joint and the arterial cartilage is starting to dysfunction. And in the literature it gives you a very specific description of what the C means and what the S means. Okay? So, I also want to palpate up here to this, this muscle which we no is the masseter, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. And I can feel her teeth. Her mouth is shut and her teeth are closed together. Give me just a little bit of a gap between your teeth there. And that forces the muscle into the neutral position. And it's fairly tight. You will often find trigger points in the masseter. And you deal with the trigger point in the masseter just like you would any other muscle. The other muscles that are involved here, we have the temporalis muscle, we have the hyoid, homohyoid, and glenohyoid muscles there. We have the lateral pterygoid, and the way that you find the lateral pterygoid is you've got the auditory opening of the ear canal. You want to find that area right there, and then you want to put your finger right in front of the hole onto the face, and then I'm going to ask her to open her jaw. And when she does, a divot will open up that my fingers slide into. I'm now palpating the lateral pterygoid, and that's a muscle with a funky spelling. It's P-T-E-R-A-G-O-I-D. So I'm palpating that, and with her mouth open, it opens up this space and allows my fingers to slide in. I'm doing slight circular motion. Sometimes direct pressure is enough, depending on how inflamed it is, but sometimes the, if they're super inflamed, the cir circular motion may be irritating for them, so I just do direct pressure. Now, the medial pterygoid, the way that you find that, if you go directly behind the ear, put your two fingers in a little space there right behind the ear, I'm going to ask her to open her jaw wide, and when she does, a huge divot will open up, and I can get two fingers in. That is the medial pterygoid. Now I'm going to ask her to let her jaw close naturally. It's getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and then it's going to hit a little bump, and then it closes completely. Okay, those are the muscles that operate the jaw to allow you to, to chew, to grind, to grind your teeth, and then give yourself a wicked headache and a good case of temporomandibular joint dysfunction. So. With Esperanza, if we determine the root of the cause of her TMJ in the first place, she has a deviation of the chin. Esperanza, have you had any trauma to your face or jaw in your lifetime that you know of? Um, Car twice accident? when I was very small. What happened? Uh, fell right on my chin. Okay. Um, actually twice. Once when I was five, once when I was seven or eight. Okay. Can't remember. So we have a potential for a trauma here. But something that we will see in, in a little while when we also take a look at Esperanza's daughter Mary, we will see that, that Mary has a very similar set to her chin. 
So she had some trauma at an early age, but she also may have some congenital factors there too, that there may be something on one side that's a little longer than the other. Um, any tooth loss, any dental issues, braces as a child? Um, I had to have my wisdom teeth taken out uh, when I was 21. And yes, I had to have braces. They said, believe it or not, that my mouth was too small for my teeth. So they did a rapid palate expander and... and they didn't do a palate expander. They just slightly flared the teeth. Okay. That's all. They okay. didn't take any out. So they did a slight adjustment to the original alignment. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that factors into the chin also. Um, one of the things that they do in the dental field is um, they can go in and adjust your teeth when the, when the alignment is not correct. They'll grind down the surface of one tooth or another so that the teeth will close together more, more naturally, that they'll, they'll, they'll grind food more effectively. A lot of times they do that for teeth grinders. It takes the edge off and there's nothing there for them to, to fixate on. So you, when you're sleeping, your mind will do that automatically, but if they take away the fixation, then, then it allows you to rest um, comfortably.